Hey, it's Nick from Sparkfun Electronics. I'm here to show you a little demo of uh, vacuum form molding. So, uh, vacuum forming is a process that's used to form a thin plastic sheet uh, into the shape of a mold. And uh, this is used in making shells for RC cars. It's used in um, a lot of small scale modeling, like uh, in special effects and prop building especially. Um, it's also used in the manufacture of some car parts and uh, in clamshell packaging um, like we use in our retail line. So uh, what I did was over the weekend I've taken some parts from around my office and put together a little vacuum forming rig just to sort of play with the concept and um, do some, some proof of concept molds. Um, what you're going to find with most uh, vacuum forming rigs is that they have uh, three or four parts. They have a vacuum bed, uh, which is just the part that the uh, air is pulled out of. It's uh, a porous material, usually a screen or some kind of grid. Um, underneath that, you're going to have an actual vacuum pump to pull the air out of the substrate. Um, then you're going to have what's called a media clamp, which is just a frame into which you clamp your working piece. Um, and then finally, you'll have some sort of heat source uh, that warms up the plastic and makes it soft. So um, what happens during the vacuum molding process is that you'll take a positive, um, something like this. This is a little space invader that I cut on our laser cutter here. Um, and you'll place it on the vacuum bed. And then you'll clamp some uh, thin uh, thermoplastic in the media clamp and slide that down over it. Um, after you've heated up the thermoplastic, it'll start to get nice and soft, and then you can slide it down over the positive, pull the air out, and you'll be left with a negative uh, copy of what you were vacuum forming. So um, the way that I heat up the thermoplastic uh, in such a small area um, is just a hot air rework station. I'm using our SparkFun branded uh, SMD rework station. Um, if you're doing a larger piece of plastic, you may need something like a heat lamp or an oven to get a nice uh, even heat, but uh, I find that in a small setup like this, a uh, handheld uh, heat wand works just fine, or even just a heat gun. Um, for car paint. So um, I'm going to get it set up uh, with a piece of plastic here and then I'll show you how the process goes and I'll do a mold for you. Um, as far as thermoplastics go, you can use uh, a lot of different plastics. Uh, these clear molds, I, all, I made all of these by using cut up pieces of some of our retail packaging. Um, it's a clear PVC. Um, but I found that actually the cheapest and uh, the best way to do this is using polystyrene. Now in uh, vacuum folding, uh, vacuum forming in the industry, a lot of the times what you'll see is high impact polystyrene. This is just normal polystyrene which I found at the grocery store um, in the form of cheap plastic picnic plates. Um, I think you can get a stack of like 50 of these for like two bucks or something. It's great material. So let me get set up here and I'll show you how this works. So here we are getting ready to uh, do a vacuum mold. So um, this is, again, the media clamp. This is the part that you're going to put your thermoplastic in. Um, all I've done is I've taken one of our plastic picnic plates and I've cut a square out of it about the size of the clamp and uh, sort of trimmed around these beam profiles and then uh, punched some holes and I just clamped the thing together with some 440 screws. Um, and on the bottom here, you can see I've hot glued this gasket in place. You could use a rubber band or um, a hair tie or just about anything, just to get a nice seal against the vacuum table. So um, now that we have this set up, um, I want to just want to show you a little bit about the uh, bottom of the vacuum table. Uh, this guy right here is another laser cut part. And um, just as a side note, uh, you will be able to download these uh, profiles in either SVG or PDF format. I've put them on the blog post. So. Um, underneath you can see it's got this porthole. Um, that is so that you can actually attach the vacuum hose to it. Um, instead of using a vacuum pump, I'm actually using uh, the vacuum cleaner from the office across the hall. Seems to work pretty well. Um, if you're doing anything larger than this, a uh, vacuum cleaner probably won't work. You'll need something that can actually pull a strong vacuum. So um, set that up in the bottom of that, just kind of on the edge of the desk. And we have our media clamp 
will just kind of slide that into place over the rails. And the purpose of these rails, which is just a frame that I built out of micro racks, is to make sure that the media um, stays centered over your positive while you're dropping it down onto the vacuum table. Otherwise, you end up with weird things like bubbles and webbing, and they can really screw up your mold. So we've got our media clamp in place on the frame here and ready to drop down onto the vacuum table. Um, so now all we need is our positive. Um, what we're going to use this time, I think, is this little plate that has a bunch of little spark from flames in it. And that'll give us a nice uh, background for our main positive, which is this uh, large spark fun flame. Again, these are just uh, flat pieces that I cut out on our laser cutter here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do a vacuum form of those. So I just place those underneath the media on the vacuum bed. Um, the vacuum bed is set up such that it allows uh, suction across the whole surface. Um, uh, so that even if you put something on top of it and the air can't get all the way around, it'll still be able to pull all of the air out of the um, area between your thermoplastic and the vacuum bed. So um, our next step is actually to heat up the thermoplastic. Now to do this, I've taken our SMD rework station and I've just pulled the nozzle off the front of the wand. So we've got a nice big um, flow of hot air here. I have the air setting turned to uh, 4 out of 8, so it's kind of a nice slow moving flow. I've set the temperature as high as it'll go, which is uh, 480 degrees Celsius. So now I'm just going to start evenly applying heat to the thermoplastic. What you're going to notice is that uh, the thermoplastic sort of starts to drop and it gets this sort of wavy look to it. Um, th there's going to be actually two separate stages of that. It'll do it once, and that'll be when it starts to loosen inside the frame. And then when it does it a second time, you'll be ready to actually vacuum form. You should be able to see around the edge of the circle as you're doing this um, that it's drooping in towards the piece. Let's see if I can touch this. You can see it's, uh, it's actually loose in the frame. Okay, now that the media is nice and warm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try as quickly as possible. I'm going to pull the heat away. I'm going to step on the uh, power switch for the vacuum cleaner, and I'm going to slide this down over our piece, and we'll see if we can get a good mold. Okay, so that could have gone a little bit better, but all, all things considered, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull our piece out of the frame. We can drop our positives off the table there and slide the media clamp out of here. And there's our finished mold of the spark fun flame. You can see there, and there's the positive side. You could use this to um, mold a composite material like carbon fiber or fiberglass. You could cut this out and actually use it in your um, final piece, or just have um, a whole bunch of these things laying around uh, to show people your nerd cred that you could build your own vacuum forming machine. So that's desktop vacuum forming on the really mega cheap. So um, here's our finished piece and our positive here. Um, you can actually find the design files for this uh, benchtop vacuum forming press uh, on the blog post. I've uploaded them in both SVG and PDF format. So if you have access to a laser cutter or a CNC router, um, you should be able to turn out those parts. Uh, it's just a little bit of acrylic. I used all quarter inch acrylic, but you can use just about any thickness you want. Um, and then uh, some micro racks frame, and you should be able to figure out the dimensions of that frame uh, based on the spacing of the holes in the design files. So um, go and make yourself one. Pick up some plastic picnic plates at your uh, local grocery store and make some molds because uh, this is really fun, and hopefully you'll be able to use it in your projects.